In this video, I want to talk about the issue of having a lag dependent variable in your model in the context of the strict exogeneity assumption. So the idea here is that we might be modeling a univariate time series, let's say a company sales at given time t, and we say that that is dependent on the company sales in period t minus one, plus some sort of error ut. And remember that the strict exogeneity assumption in this context says that the expectation of ut given the company's sales at some other period s has to be equal to zero. And that has to be equal to zero for all values of s, including the situation where s equals t. Okay, so why doesn't this necessarily hold for the case of having a lag dependent variable in our model? So we can see quite easily that the covariance of ut with sales in some sort of period, let's say t minus one or t minus two, or in general t minus tau, has to be equal to zero. So there's no problem there. But remember, we actually have to have the strict exogeneity assumption says that this covariance has to hold for all periods s, including the situation where we're talking about that particular time period. So the covariance of ut with sales at time t also has to be equal to zero. But in this situation where we've got sales as a lag dependent variable, that's not gonna be the case because we, we can rewrite this as the covariance of ut with sales where we just replace sales by our relationship here, which says that we've now got the covariance of ut with alpha plus beta times sales at time t minus one plus ut. And even though we can conclude that ut isn't correlated with alpha because it's a constant and sales at time t minus one because there's no reason to suggest it would be, we cannot remove the covariance of ut with itself. And the covariance of ut with itself is just defined as the variance of ut, which we might say is some constant sigma squared, which doesn't equal zero. So we've actually got a violation of the strict exogeneity assumption for the case when we have a lag dependent variable because we have that the expectation of ut given sales at time t doesn't equal zero. So in these circumstances, beta hat ordinary least squares will actually in general not equal the true parameter beta. And in situations where beta is around one, beta hat ordinary least squares will actually be downwardly biased. So you can ask, how do we actually go about estimating these types of model when we have a lag dependent variable? Well, it actually turns out that un after we assume some other things, it turns out that beta hat ordinary least squares will still tend, if we increase our sample size, to the true population parameter beta as our sample size goes to infinity. So under some other assumptions, which I'm gonna sort of not talk about too much here, just to say that we call them weak dependency, it turns out that ordinary least squares is actually still a consistent estimator. So in large samples, all is not lost when we're estimating a lag dependent variable model. 